Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. I have an awful echo. <laughs> ah. Hmm. What could that be from? No, it's not from you guys. It's from me. I, I recommend you in the chat on the left. If you chat a little bit more, it will be easier for the language and the, and the uh, Robert speaking and we talking and we are making comments. I mean. Okay. Well, we're making webhead history or learning together history or whatever. We're uh, taking advantage of, you know, last week we met in Google Hangout like this only for our learning together session, which ha takes place every Sunday at about this time. It happens to be 1400 uh, GMT at the moment. And i also like to mention the date while I'm at it. Today is the 27th of May, 2012. And so one week ago on the 22nd of May, uh, it was not possible for us to stream like this and record. We were able to stream, but we weren't able to record it. And you can see in our archives at posturus.com. Together at posturus.com. Can everyone hear me okay, by the way? Beautiful. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, uh, we, it, it only happened that, you know, that the worldwide rollout happened just this last week. So, of course, we're all picking up on it. Robert uh, posted that information in a short video, which I watched and was inspired immediately to record my own. A Hello World video. So, uh, here we are. We're able to, uh, to broadcast uh, using Google Hangout. And um, I think this is actually going to revolutionize, uh, you know, collaborating together like this because it's so easy now. It used to be such so difficult. Hi everybody. Okay. So well maybe we could go around and see who all the people are. Uh, I'm Vance in Abu Dhabi, UAE. And over there on my which way? That way. <laughs> that direction. Nope. That that way. Oh, that way. Who's over there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can go. Um, I'm Robert Squires. I'm in Missoula, Montana. Um, it's a pretty rainy day. Uh, day. Peggy? Explain the, the jacket. Peggy went dark there. Oh, we can go over to Nina. Let's Let's... Okay. Hi, Nina. I'm, where, are you, where are you? I'm Nina Liakos. I'm in Gaithersburg, Maryland, outside of Washington, D.C. It's hot and humid. Hmm. My video keeps freezing. Sometimes I have to exit and then come back in in order to fix that. So, and then next we have Luis. Uh, my name is Luis Ordonez. I am from the Caribbean, uh, country in the Caribbean, Venezuela. I am in Caracas now and uh, enjoy very much to be with you. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Okay, and next door, that's, uh, uh, that's Lane. Lane next door. Hi. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Lane Marshall, and I'm in uh, New York. I'm at Long Island University. I'm enjoying a week between semesters, and I begin on Tuesday teaching multicultural education. So I'm going to have my students chime wow. in. Wow! This course, I have to have us all join uh, when it starts up. Fantastic! Okay, there. you can play them this video. Yes. Okay, and and Dilip. Have you got a microphone? Can you hear us okay? Dilip Barad. Uh, I met him in Delore, uh, India, um, last summer. And um, he's a colleague of Kalyan Chattopathyay's. Can you hear us, Dilip? He's from India. He's a professor there. Can you hear us okay? Okay. Next to Dilip is on the far left over there. That would be Aiden. Can you hear yeah. us? Yes, okay. I can hear you. I, I don't know how to use this thing, and uh, I don't have a 
uh, a microphone. Well, I'm using uh, a built-in mic. But anyway, I hope you can hear me uh, loud and clear. Um, we can. I'm, yeah, and uh, I'm in mm -hmm. Kaohsiung, Taiwan. I teach at uh, Wenzhou Orthodox College of Languages, and yeah, I've taught language and culture before. So yes, glad to be here. Okay. Well, let's see. We have a program tonight. Let's see if I can find it. I can put a link in the. Uh, I'm not sure what I've got here. Cue to go. That's it, right there. That's the that's the link to Robert's session. And um, we didn't hear. I don't know. Is Peggy still there? Peggy, uh, you. Uh, if you can say hi to us, we could hear you. Okay, Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona, and she just typed that. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so, um, Robert, let's turn it over to you. And If you want to click on the link I put in there, you would be able to browse to the web page that Robert put up and tell us about your course. It's on uh, multicult teaching multiculturalism. Can yeah. you tell us about it? Sure. Thanks, Vance. Um, well, my background, like, like many of yours, it, it seems, um, is in uh, education and, and teaching English as a second language. And um, I've become involved more recently in uh, the field of instruction design and designing online learning experience for students. And obviously, been following what's been going on in the world of um, open online courses is there's a lot going um, on at this time but the, the basically this course in, in multicultural education is a, a kind of coming together of many different um, interests of mine uh, exploring what it means to, to create a, a democratic learning opportunity uh, for students within the, the structures that exist at, let's say, a, a, a public institution in, in North America. So um, I'm not sure uh, to what extent all of you have, have participated in, in some of the, the open online courses that have been offered uh, recently, but the idea with this course is to do things um, a little bit differently. Um, it, it's clearly in the same vein, but rather than this being a a massive open online course, I'd like it to be much more of a, a, an intimate, collaborative experience where, where the participants also have that opportunity to, to get uh, interaction with the, the, the facilitators of the session as well as the interaction that, that can happen between self-forming networks or, or groups of, of peers. So it's, it's kind of an attempt to, to get the best of, of the online instruction uh, uh, element as well as the, the, the diversity and potential that opening it up can bring. And I'm, I'm already just blown away by um, uh, Lane's, Lane's comment there that she's hoping to have her multicultural class join our class for this session. I mean, I just think that's absolutely amazing, and, and I would love it for you to um, join us as well. Um, what one of the what, part of my thinking in terms of, of making a, a smaller, more um, uh, <laughs> I guess intimate online course is, you know, some of the experiences that I've had um, with the electronic uh, village online. Um, Vance and I had a, a conversation. Um, about when you know the, the first EVO sessions um, came about, and this was in 2001, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the, um, the point is that um, the work that's going on in terms of fostering that that collaboration is, has has its forefather or mother or whatever um, uh, at an earlier time than, than you know these recent developments with MOOCs and I think that we've learned a great deal um, by uh, developing the, this approach over time. And one of the strengths and um, uh, Nina might be able to speak to this because she was my uh, she was a co-facilitator on, on a session that we did. Um, 
one of the greatest strengths of the EBO sessions is that there was that support from the facilitators um, for the students in the course. Um, Aidan it, it, you know, could, could also you know, um, point to numerous examples of the way that the, um, the, the facilitators, the moderators come together in the EBO sessions to really um, create as much of a, a student-centered learning experience as, as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's, that's one of the things that I think we need to kind of look at at this time with the uh, massive open online courses. Um, of course, there's, there's something very powerful to be able to, to, to access these different resources that are um, available to everyone and connect with peers and, and self-form and investigate. But the reality is, um, with those kinds of numbers, you know, over 2,000, or if we're looking at the, the Stanford MOOCs on artificial intelligence or machine learning, the numbers are in the 150,000s. We're, we're talking about a much more um, either independent model, which is fine, um, or we're talking about a much more uh, interaction with content model. And I think a key uh, instructional design model um, by Garrison and Anderson, uh, the Community of Inquiry Framework, emphasizes the three different elements, uh, content, to content, uh, content to student interaction or student to content interaction, uh, student to student, and, and maybe participant is a better word, um, and uh, participant to instructor interaction. And I think if you get those three elements in an online course, then you really have uh, uh, a stronger learning experience, um, and that's you know there's research to support that those are, are all key elements. So I, I kind of think that um, the model that has been uh, or evolved with the EBO sessions, um, in addition to you know some principles of instructional design, um, help the the the, the, the discussion that's taking place in, term, in terms of how do we create a, an open online experience that is as rewarding as possible for students. And multicultural education couldn't be a better topic for it, it seems. So that, that's my thinking on the openness side of things, but I'd be, I'd be very interested in, in hearing uh, you know, um, what other thoughts you might have about perhaps recently um, your experiences in those those massive open online courses. Um, uh, you you say your course will be in a Moodle, but you haven't put a link up. Is it open for everybody, or uh, is it you're going to keep it small somehow? Yeah, it is open for everybody, and um, I have a separate site that um, I can shoot you the link. I was I was making sure it was up last night. Um, that I'll I'll uh, make sure that everybody can go to sign up there. So what what will happen? Everybody can join. Um, it'll be a, a, a first come first serve type of basis. Um, I I guess I would estimate that um, uh, we would have around a, a hundred or so additional participants in this in this course. And Lane, if that you know if there's a class that I know is looking to participate. We can certainly, uh, you know, work with that as well. Um, but basically, I'll, I'll, there'll be a, a, a website. Um, uh, it's eac.instructionaldesigning.org, um, and you'll go to that site, and then there'll be a form to sign up. Um, and what I need to do is create those uh, accounts uh, because the Moodle is the system that the University of Montana uses. So. Um, you're within a, 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 a closed system. Um, the way that we get at the openness element of that is participants can be using their blogs, we'll be using Eagle, we'll be using Twitter, we'll be using Google+, Tumblr, Posters, whatever media tools individuals would like to use. Um, but there'll also be uh, uh, a, a clearly designed framework within uh, uh, a learning management system that um, is owned and operated by. Is that okay? Yeah. Incidentally, 
I might, if, if there's noise coming from somewhere, I might mute that noise. And if I do mute you, you'll have to unmute yourself. That is, you can easily do that. But once I've muted you, I can't unmute you. So uh, you, you'll have to unmute yourself. So you, you should see an indication on your uh, somewhere that you're muted. And you, your lips will move and will tell you you're muted. <laughs> OK. So, and another thing, too, you might mute yourself when you're not talking. That, that could help solve problems, too. There's a little mic icon you can click on. And uh, we'll switch off your sound in case there's noise going on in your house or something like that. OK. Well, if you uh, I to share links, in, I guess we just do it through Google Plus, and then everybody can access it. Is that what you figured out, Lance? Uh, yeah, you can put the links in the text chat if you have that open. Do you have it open? There's, there's a chat going on. I think you might have to click on the chat button in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Um, but we've got a link to instructional design, designing, instructionaldesigning.org. Oh, I guess it's mm -hmm. want to um, add eac.instructionaldesigning.org in front of that. I don't see Instructional the chat. designing. What? Yeah, you, Could you, you type it into the chat, Robert? Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. OK, uh, look. Up in the upper left I, Yeah, I see oh, the upper left where it says chat, yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Aiden. Mm -hmm. Thanks, all. Cool. Try that. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Designing. So yeah. All right. We'll stick that in the. So is that live now, Robert? It is. Yeah. Robert, when does your course officially start? Uh, June 11. <coughs> I guess I'll, I'll start creating those um, uh, accounts around June 6th or 7th and, and, and get people access to the course a few days before it starts. Um, so. And, and how but long will it run? Say that again? How long will it run, the course? Seven weeks. Robert, I'm curious. Is the University of Montana supporting you in this, or are you just doing this for the love of it in your spare time? Yeah, yeah it, it's kind of an experiment um, to an extent. So yes, the university is supporting the experiment. Um, <clears throat> but part of my interest here is um, I'm, I, I would like to investigate you know, what impact uh, bringing diversity into the classroom has uh, in terms of student achievement. And so I'm, I'm started my doctoral studies in um, this uh, focus on whether or not we can improve the learning experience by bringing in greater diversity. And, and as you'd expect, there's some research to, to support that idea. But whether that can be fostered in this online space is something that I'm, I'm looking at investigating mm. as part of my thesis. So um, it's, I, and at this stage, this, this time, we're just, um, <clears throat> being experimental, so uh, there's no, this isn't a research piece that's going on as part of this course. Right. Can, can you, um, are you going to focus on K through 12 or higher ed or everything? This classroom discounts, I mean, every kind of classroom or certain kinds of classrooms? That's a great question. Yeah, the part of the curriculum and instruction program at the University of Montana has a has an explicit K through 12 focus, um, and K through 16. Um, so, one of the, the 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 groups or a part of the audience that I'd like to have participate in this course are actual Missoula County Public Schools teachers. Um, and one thing I've been toying with is um, offering um, Office of Public Instruction OPI credit for um, participation in this course, um, which would mean tracking, you know, their participation. But it would be wonderful to have some teachers who are actually um, in the schools that can make a difference in terms of, um, you know, how to approach issues of, of race, gender, bullying, social justice, and how to get at a, a critical pedagogy. Um, so that would be another audience that I'd love to have participate. 
Yeah, I'm just wondering because, you know, I teach in higher education and I'm wondering how, how relevant this is going to be to me. Obviously, it's an interesting topic, but um, is it professionally interesting to me or just interesting to me? You know, do I want to devote all the time it, it would take um, when well, I don't teach kids? Sure. No, I, you know, and one thing that's really interesting is um, I'm co-designing this course with a, a Native American guy who's in my <coughs> doctoral program. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> uh, so we're really, you know, uh, getting at some of those kinds of um, issues that, you know, is part of American culture. Um, uh, basically, you know, if you consider how the, the history of the United States has developed, the impact on Native Americans, um, you know, there's a, a lot that needs to be explored. So I think there will be a, it, certainly broader considerations that spin out of the course. It's not, you know, a, a part of the, the K-16 teaching program, as it were. Um, obviously, my, my main focus is, is higher education these days. Um, uh, but I, I think that there'll be a little bit for everyone. <laughs> Uh, so, absolutely, uh, for you, Nina, on a casual basis, perhaps like Peggy, I think that it might be kind of interesting. Sounds interesting. Uh, Louise is asking politely if he could. Oh, so Louise popped out of here. Yeah, he lost. Oh, okay. Uh, he he wanted to make a comment. Um, I've I've been uh, kind of tuning into most of the MOOCs going on. Uh, Kurt Bonk is um, giving a, I think he's going to talk, he hasn't, oh, uh, Louise is there back. He is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Louise, go ahead. Okay. What, what did okay. you want to say? Uh, 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 Robert, I wanted to ask you the following question. Uh, let me explain first. I, right now I am taking a, a Stanford course on entrepreneurship. Through that course I met a guy from Argentina and a guy from Italy. The guy from Italy is a t educational, uh, is a professor in the university in education. The guy in Argentina is a businessman that works with, a ba uh, 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 let's say, uh, with digital basis, okay, with uh, electronics. And I am trying to learn why it's so hard in our school system to introduce uh, digital uh, techniques, all these technologies that we are using today to, to say something. I am interested in technology transfer from your culture, American Anglo-Saxon culture, to our Latin American culture. And I call it technology transfer because it's really a technological problem to, to transfer all that within a frame mind. Okay. What I wanted to point is that in my Stanford course, I met the Argentinian, I met the Italian, and we made the team, and we are working together and learning a lot. Before this class, I was working with the Italian guy who is a PhD in education, and we are talking about uh, theories that will help us to create um, clients. Clients means people that must first become uh, literate, in, the, in all these technologies before making cooperatives, coops, to develop business. We are thinking about developing coops for development. But first you must train them in all these technologies. The reason why I explain all, all of this is because when I get into these massive courses, I am looking for other participants to make teams that will allow me to learn much more in the specific areas that I want. So I get the general aspects from the teacher that is teaching the course. For example, in, the, in your course you are going to talk about culturalism, and I am very interested in that area for the reasons that I already explained. But you will be talking to a, a bunch of people, so you will be t t treating general topics. Within the participants, I can find a specific people, like for example, uh, follow uh, what I already put in this all, uh, on the chat, the world values uh, survey. I don't know if, if you will be mentioning that kind of work in your talk, but the, the World Value Survey, uh, uh, is, um, I just 
I, I put it on before. I won't write it again, okay? But it's very interesting. If I can find in your course three, four guys that are working on that, will be great for what I am doing. That's why I like these formats of many participants. When you say that you prefer a small participants, it's because uh, you have in mind something that you must uh, pass on to, to the students. My question is, you follow my difference. What do you prefer? What do you recommend? Yeah, I, you know, and I, I, I guess I disagree with the the thought that um, the the group is smaller because this is something that you know we want to pass on to the students. The idea with keeping the group smaller is that um, it provides an opportunity for greater interaction amongst the group. Um, that. It, it, if you're looking for numbers, uh, then those massive open online courses is exactly where you need to be. I, you know, I would say that you know it, this course is open to everyone, but in order to provide the best possible elements of interaction, and um, for example, I mean, if you want to investigate some work uh, related to the, the the link that you shared, and have Shandine and I, I mean, we, we happen to be the facilitators, but we're participants in that course. If you wanted to have us give some, some feedback on that, I think that that's part of this potential experience, that we should all be open to looking at the work that everyone is doing and offering real feedback on it. What I've been finding in MOOCs is that you, the, the, the stream is pretty thin. So unless you're looking for, you know, finding those individuals that are, 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 are like-minded that you can, you can work together on, which is a, a very legitimate aim of, uh, of a MOOC, um, then in, in terms of the, the how you can interact around certain topics, I think from the feet that come, let's say, from change 2011, there's, a, there's, I don't know, a dozen tweets and maybe one blog post uh, coming on a weekly basis, and then of course there's the live sessions, which are which are great and add value to the the whole experience. But I'm talking about a much more interactive kind of experience, and that's why we're keeping the groups smaller, so that there is that that ability to really get together around these ideas. Does that make sense? Yeah, I I put the. Uh words orient, declare, network, cluster, and focus in the text chat because that's, those are how Dave Cormier in his little videos that he made, which are really worth watching, uh, how he said you deal with MOOCs. Uh, you orient, you that is, you see what's going on there, then you declare why you're there, then you start networking, and that's the part that, um, well, actually the clustering, uh, that is, you, you find people in that network that you want to deal with, and that's what Louise is describing. And then focus, that means to come up with your own project or your own learning outcome, you know, from, from that. So um, that's uh, supposedly one of the advantages of a huge MOOC, but I'm sure there's a, you know, as long as you reach a critical mass, your, your MOOC will take off. I mean, if you're talking to a hundred people or something like that, that's fine, you know, that, but, uh, but still, even, even I'm that size. for a critical mass, to be honest. Um, it's a, I, and this is the thing, I, I think that, you know, a, a MOOC is slightly different. What, what we're looking for is um, the ability to bring in the, the best of the, the, the diversity that can, can happen in an open online course, but do so in, in such a way that the whole group um, can come together and feel as though they're supported and facilitated in that learning experience. Um, so I think at this time, MOOCs, MOOCs are fantastic, don't get me wrong, but there, there's, it seems, in, in, it, there's a need to balance the, the involvement around the, 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 the contributions that people are making. Um, and uh, sometimes, it get you get lost in the stream, or the stream itself isn't that rich. 
um, because it's you know a, a, a few posts here and there. Now, I, I'd be, it, it's an interesting point. I think that what's been done with MOOCs, and, and this is Siemens and Downs, I, I think they do fantastically, and that is th this sense that it, um, education should be a democratic process, that everyone can join and participate as they, they, they would like to participate. That's exactly the idea that I would like to get at. What concerns me is with the, the Stanford MOOCs, um, is how it's based upon um, an educational model that is, again, teacher-fronted, that is uh, uh, a model that is a distribution of core content um, and not generated um, at, by the group or having the possibility of, of uh, feedback directly from those instructors. And that's the piece that I'd like to incorporate into this open online experience. That, I, and by instructor, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to give a sense of uh, facilitator here, um, that there needs to be that uh, opportunity to, to connect with, with that group. I, I so agree, Robert. I think that, well, I've never signed up for one of those MOOCs because they just seem to to me to be so overwhelming and not, not very different from watching a series of recorded lectures. Uh, there are so many of those on the web, um, like Michael Sandel's Justice from Harvard. It's very interesting, but there's no, it's all one way. Um, so I think a, a MOOC, a massive uh, class is also pretty much all one way. There are only going to be a few people that are gonna, going to manage to get to to turn it around and, and have some input. But I'm I'm also wondering, in your course, let's say let's say if I sign up for your course, but I'm kind of peripherally interested because of where I work. Um, you know that basically takes a place away from somebody who, who is <coughs> more focused on K through 12 and maybe that's not a good thing to have me essentially lurking in the background uh, and that that connects with another question I wanted to ask which was how exactly were you going to to limit the number of participants H how are you going to cut off the participants at a hundred I mean what what happens if it goes viral and you know a million people decide that they want to participate in this intimate experience. I always, I always wonder that with EVO, like yeah. wouldn't it be better if people were, if the sessions were limited, but then you also have the problem that in any given session some of the most interactive people may come in at the end whereas the people that signed up early may be lurking if they're there at all. So have you thought about how you're going to deal with these problems? Um, yeah, I, I have a bit. Um, and, you know, again, it's, it's something that's going to be a bit of an experiment. But, um, you know, I, I think Lane put in the, uh, the, the chat there that lurking is unavoidable. Um, and I think that that's absolutely right. And I think that that's great if people want to come and, and just see what this um, course will, will be like, and that's wonderful. The way that I, I've been looking um, in, in terms of the participation um, of, of around 100 people, and based on experiences with the EVO sessions, based on looking at the, the data from uh, Planck 2010, CTK 08, um, uh, other uh, massive open online courses, is that typically you have around, or somewhere between, two to seven percent of the people who um, are the total enrollment actively participating and it's it's a very similar number to to the number of participants actively within a, a community of practice or um, a networked group like the webheads for instance I mean this this group here represents the active participants which is more in the webheads but um, who are, are involved um, so the the idea is that if we have approximately a hundred people sign up at, at that eac.instructionaldesigning.org, um, then out of that 100, I expect pretty much 95 
percent of those 95 to be just experiencing, being part of it, and uh, bringing whatever they would like to the table every now and then. And um, what it means probably is that around five are going to participate actively, and and by participating actively, I'm not expecting them to, to be completing the assignments that the um, the other students are required to in order to meet the expectations of a, a graduate level curriculum and instruction course at the University of Montana. We're going to have 21 uh, at this point graduate students who, of course, um, uh, there'll be a, a number of assignments, they'll have options um, uh, in terms of those assignments and they will have the uh, ability to create their own assignments if that's what they choose to do. Um, they will have to, in a traditional sense of, of you know, assessment uh, uh, with, with rubrics based on the uh, learning outcomes of the course and the course has been designed with those learning outcomes in mind, um, they will have to um, demonstrate you know, that they've, they've uh, achieved those, those outcomes. Um, for those that are participating for their own interest, um, they can participate as they please. And um, I think that, uh, as I said, the experience is uh, 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 a smaller group tend to participate um, more frequently than the others. Now, it might be completely off. <laughs> it might be the case that we you know, have a, a class like Lanes that are incredibly active, and we, have, uh, uh, and we have some very unusual kinds of levels of interaction. But based on, on those um, experiences and the, uh, looking at the massive open online courses, that's the kind of level of participation I predict, Nina. So you're right in there with that 95% and just going to come and hang out. And if the participation is, you know, we can feel that it would be nice to continue to open it up, well, we just create some more, we create some more accounts for more positions. So if we have... Um, 200 people sign up, well, maybe we, we create another um, 100 accounts and, uh, and see how that works. So, um, yeah, we will see. Um, can I ask Luis a question, Vance? Oh, I was, well, if you have something more to say, go ahead. I was going to get... Uh, uh, Aiden, since she got back to tell us more about world Englishes and miscommunications in view of English as an international language. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Anyway, but no, fin finish your point. Well, my answer is a, a separate question for, for Luis, so that's okay. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> Aiden, would you like to tell us about your world English? Okay, well, I was, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me clearly because I don't have um, uh, a workable microphone. Um, just let me know if you can hear me. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, well, the way English this project is. Um, um, I was in charge of that a few years ago before I left um, Rensau. And um, it's a project um, which is supported by some private organizations. Um, and it is actually led by Waseda University. And what they do is they are in collaboration with different classes in different countries. Um, for example, when I was um, in charge of this project in my school, there were about four or five universities, um, and that means five classes. And each class has about 40, 40 students. Well, mine, uh, at the time, I had 50 students. So, so that's about um, a big collaborative project wherein there were about 250 to 300 students participating. But the, um, it, it was, the course was done, well, you know, we had this video lectures that were posted on sort of like a Moodle 
And so when um, um, when Nina mentioned something about the the, the MOOC, um, it was exactly like that. And it's just uh, you know they organized the materials quite well. So it was, um, you know the materials were accessible and um, they were arranged in order. However, the level of participation with the students were not as um, as high, because I felt that um, you know the students were forced to participate, and they were forced to present online. Um, mine was a blended learning um, course, so um, the face-to-face -face interaction helped, but with the online interaction with the other foreign students. I think that um, they were merely doing it simply because they had to, and that's part of getting the grade. So that's all I have to say. But but uh, before I go, um, we have this face-to-face -face meeting in Singapore, in all this, uh, you know, selected students uh, were invited to go to Singapore and the you know lodging and and fair fair. Um, will pay for by what other universities. So that's one good thing about this project. Well, you can follow the link if you want to know more about it, but I'm no longer in charge of this project. Thanks, Aidan. That's really interesting. I think it's... Yeah, thanks, Paul. Oh, well, yeah. I was probably going to say about what you're going to say, and that is we are coming to the end of an hour, which is most people's approximate attention span when they're watching videos or listening to things like this. So um, we might want to be thinking about wrapping it up, uh, but whatever you want to do is fine too. So back to you, Robert. Well, I, I can certainly talk a, a lot more about <laughs> this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, this is this is kind of what's um, uh, keeping me busy, and, and and this is where my interests are at this point. So it's just wonderful to be able to find some different ideas and, and get some feedback there. I think to Aidan's point, um, it really is difficult to bring that kind of an experience that how do you get the students to to be passionate and care deeply about the work that they have to do and obviously we have to take some um, responsibility for designing that, for structuring that, for organizing that and of course there is a requirement um, as part of a program that we assess and we grade and we um, you know, take care of all of these um, uh, uh, different requirements but what we're really looking for, and this is part of the hope of the um, inclusion of, of people <coughs> from the network, what we're really hoping for is that um, I just want to do this. I'm in that moment. I, 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 I mean, I'm engaged like the best um, uh, moments of when we're out there on the web exploring you know, those, those different resources that come our way. We're like, yes, that's brilliant. That's what it's about. If, if by including, you know, that diversity, an additional hundred or so, you know, we can, we can demonstrate, you know, that level of joy for learning that, that takes place, you know, as we're investigating these different things on our own, then, then maybe we can fuse these, these two elements and create a more rewarding um, learning experience for everyone, for the students with those requirements and for those that are participating, you know, as part of this, this group. So, I, I don't know, I mean, that's, that's one of those really tricky balances to get at again, um, uh, but we'll see what we can do to, to create that. Robert, I have another question. Um, wh when will your synchronous sessions take place? Will they all be on the same day at the same time or will they vary? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, we're, we're very fortunate. Um, a fellow, um, Lay might know if she's involved in this field, uh, Paul Gorski is going to, to join us. Um, Gorski's written a number of articles um, uh, such as Tackle Night is Not Enough, where he basically says that 
way of addressing multicultural <laughs> issues by putting on a night where you have tacos <laughs> doesn't really get at Mexican culture in the United States. Super, superficial. We need hidden culture. Exactly. So um, Gorski is going to join us um, at this point. I, I just arranged it so it worked conveniently for his schedule, Nina. It's going to be on Thursday, I think, um, June. I need to check exactly. June 27th. Uh, Thursday, June 28th. Um, the uh, and and then uh, I've I reached out to Lisa Del Pitt, who um, has done a number of, of uh, books in the field as well, um, and she's a maybe at this point. But I'll, I I can you know I'm basically just trying to 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 bring in some some thought leaders in the field and uh, uh, see what it works for their schedule. Um, they'll be recorded. Um, yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, I, I find that when when it comes to going to a recording of a session that I missed, that I have good intentions, but I don't yeah. usually go back and do it. So yeah. it will depend on, on the individual guest speaker schedules. And that's good and it's, it's bad. I mean, if, if you have a set time and I'm likely to be available at that set time, that's good. But if you have a, um, if you have a lot of different times and different days, that means that you know, I may be available for some of them. I may not be available for all of them. But um, it's unlikely that I will be unavailable for all of them. It's kind of like you, know, you can please some of the people some of the time, and all of the people some of the time, and None of the people, all of the <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, you know, I think in terms of the live sessions, I mean, one of the models that is, has developed is those weekly live, you know, meetings with um, experts in the field. And I will probably, it's a seven-week course, we'll probably just have two... Um, uh, seven weeks or ten weeks? Seven, yeah. I thought you said ten before. Um, it, so we'll probably just have... And two sessions. If, if Lisa, Lisa Del Pitt can't come, then we're going to have uh, probably uh, the coordinator for Indian Education for All um, come and speak to um, really the diversity issue um, for Montana, uh, which is um, uh, the, the miseducation of, of Native Americans. So, uh, yeah. Some of that was difficult to hear. Was it just my audio? But Sorry. The, uh, um, so the uh, for all, all. yeah, if we don't have there's some feedback, but if we don't have or are able to get the the speaker that we would like, we will also um, look at bringing in a speaker to discuss um, Indian education for all. Um, so. We'll have, we'll have some speakers, but part of the idea of this course is that we are interacting around those topics. So there'll be a case study, there'll be um, different types of um, discussions, there'll be use of voice threads, um, there'll be um, all types of uh, 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 different sharing opportunities. Um, we'll use a, a Google Doc that's embedded within Moodle to um, share different resources. Um, we'll use Google+, Plus. we'll use Twitter. Um, I, I have to kind of be careful in terms of selecting too many tools because this is a group of, um, uh, that are, come from a diverse background. They may be, may be counselors, they may be um, possibly educators uh, in, in curriculum instruction. They may be taking this course um, as part of the psychology program at the university. So I don't want to overwhelm with, with media and tools and yet we want to be able to connect, and so you have to kind of, at least in my opinion, again, scaffold that as part of this, uh, uh, allowing individuals to participate as fully as possible. So, Robert, you're going to have two groups of, of students, some taking it for credit and some taking it uh, as part of the open course, openness, yeah. with no accountability. You'll have both, both types of students, right? So we'll have about, my, uh, my guess is, I mean, it might not pan out, but we'll definitely have around 20 graduate students at the University of Montana 
um, taking this course for three credits, and then we'll have maybe around 100 um, other open uh, participants taking it for interest. And so out of that 100, I would guess um, the ma vast majority will lurk, hopefully, and we have a small hardcore group that likes to participate actively, and, and, and everyone will all bring um, uh, some, some potential to this course that we can't predict. I have a question for the group. Does anyone know of any work or research on mixing the two, mixing students who are taking it for credit requirements, mixing that with the concept of the open course? Is there, is there work being done on how that, how the interaction plays out among the students? Do they tend to just stick with the, the two separate categories? Are they all in one? Or if anyone's done that before, do you have any impressions? That's, that was the premise of the first uh, books that Downs and um, uh, oh, okay. I got to catch up. Yeah, Siemens, okay. Downs, Cormier. Yeah, they, they, they had people taking the course for credit. And, um, okay. you know, yeah, so I, I remember how they were mixing that. Um, I think Kurt Bonk might be doing a course with some students right now. Uh, I have that right. impression. That's, yeah, that, that's our next, I, I hope I've it's been, our next week's session. I'm yeah, I'm in that oh, course you, too. Oh, cool. I'm a lurker. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and you know, on the topic of lurking, I'm kind of the opposite of Nina. Uh, I really appreciate um, having the, the recordings because I've, and for the reason that you mentioned, that they, they tend to be one way, but I, um, you know, I, the one-way course I, I can really pick up on in my car, you know, on my way to work. I have kind of an almost a 40 minute commute. So, uh, and running, you know, out jogging, stuff like that. I've listened to many of Robert's um, instructional design sessions that he was doing with World Bridges and I've uh, <coughs> Peggy George's sessions. She does uh, classroom 2.0 sessions frequently. And, uh, the, and the, the change MOOC, I'm, there's a place you can go and download the recording, so I, I listen to those in the car. A uh, really nice uh, um, session I was listening to the other day by George Siemens, who was talking about learning analytics, but uh, also talking about how, well, basically, learning analytics lets you uh, figure out how you pull together the diverse elements in a course, uh, assuming that it's going to be, that, that, that there is no place in, in those courses for you to go and get the information you need. The information is kind of out there on the internet. So they have strategies. One of them is the, the daily newspaper that Stephen Downs puts out, and another one is a little script that Stephen wrote, which you sign up for. And once you've registered your blog, then that script will go out and find the blog posts that you're making and put them together actually in the, in the, the daily. So you, there's a little newsletter that comes out. It's kind of like a like one of these paperly things, except it's more focused on the course. So uh, anyway, there's so many really neat examples. Uh, and I think there are, I, I guess most people would think that I'm a lurker because I really rarely interact with these, but I learn a lot from them because uh, they, they mount these wonderful um, you know, uh, talks all the time that you can listen to as opposed to listening to pop music on the radio. There's Rita. Hi there, Rita. How are you? Rita Hello. from Argentina. Hi, Rita. How are you? Hello, Robert. Nice to see you here. Great to see you as well. Yeah, what a, what a, what a treat. <laughs> yeah, what a treat, really. Hello, Vance. Hello, Nina Hello. and everybody. Hi, Rita. Sorry, my video, my video froze a long time ago. I'd, the only way to fix it is to pop out and come back again. I didn't want to miss the conversation. So we've been having a really nice one. Yeah, um, sorry to be late, really. Yeah, well, you, well, you can hear, get the recording. This is being recorded, you know. Oh, yeah. So this is it's the end, going up on YouTube. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes, I would have liked to be here before. And I tried to join you before, really, but it was uh, impossible for some reason. Hmm. OK, well, anyway, glad you made it. And you can go back and hear the whole recording. Yeah, I will so definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. Um, I, I, of course, I 
you always learn much more um, uh, m m through the discussion than you you know you come with the idea that you're going to explain something. But um, uh, one of the, the the questions that Lane had uh, Rita just a moment ago was that um, what what investigations have there been in uh, into um, the the student um, interaction within open online courses. So those taking the course for credit as part of their university requirement and those taking the course just for their own interest. When you get these two groups together, how does that impact the learning? What's that kind of um, participation dynamic like, I think was part of Lane's thought. And um, there hasn't been a whole lot of research on that. I actually wrote Alec Kouris um, uh, a, a month or two ago and said, you know, Alec, this is what I'm up to. I'm interested in hearing what you've done. And he said, well, I'm on sabbatical this coming year and I'm going to investigate more of that, those participation dynamics. Um, okay. So that, but a Alex, Very Alex, yeah, Alex focuses more on what is the participation of, or at least this is as much as I've understood so far and I might be wrong. So. Um, the, the focus of the research that's being conducted so far is on the, the individuals that are participating for their own interest. And what I'm really interested in focusing on is um, how does the participation of you know, those non-credit participants affect the, the learning outcome achievement of the four credit student participants mm -hmm. in the course. Yeah. So, Diversity adds a great deal to the learning experience. We, we can understand that and, and in, in philosophical terms, but it, is this actually having a, a practical difference in terms of it, a student achievement? And if, if we can do some research and find support for that, then we have um, evidence to back up an approach to learning that is, is more effective. And that's what I'd like to get at. Okay, great, great. Have you? I, I suppose you've read Pops. I can't remember her first name. She did a study of one of those books, I think in 2008, something like that. Um, do, you, do you know who I'm talking about? If not, I can look so, it up. The Romanian woman? I, yeah, I, I guess so. Her name is Kop, K-O-P. Oh, no, different. I thought Pop. Oh, I'll look it up. I'll see what I can find. Anyway, Rita she did Kopp. a study. Rita Kop. That's it. Yes, Rita Kop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, she did a nice study, and then also um, um, Dave Cormier uh, did a study with a whole bunch of other authors, including his wife Bonnie and George Siemens, and uh, they wrote kind of a a manual of um, uh, you know a reflection on their books. And, but Rita's was research. Vance, may I ask? a technical Google Hangout question. I was, I was looking for you guys today and I couldn't find a link on learningtogether.pbworks and Aiden eventually sent me the link. Yeah, that um, so to me. Is there a way, I mean, it, is there always going to be the same link like there was with Illuminate, or is there a different no. link for every Hangout? <sighs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to work. This is our first time to do it this way, <laughs> so obviously we'll, we'll find a, a mechanism for the next one if we do this again, when we do this again, I should say. Um, I so think maybe putting it out on Twitter mm -hmm. might, well, I, might I did. be the I, best I way. It. Okay, yeah. but then I, I don't... I use Twitter so infrequently. Maybe I just don't know how to search for something like that. I think what, we got a little I... missed. Yeah, we got a little messed up tonight because um, Robert somehow got the time shifted. I'm not sure. And uh, That's right, right man. before the session, I was a little uh, like ten minutes before. I thought, man, I, I'd better start a hangout. I wasn't sure if Robert was going to start one, so yeah. I started one, and it got six o'clock, and I was. Uh, you know, so uh, normally I think we'd set this up a little bit in advance and have a little bit more time. But um, anyway, we're you know we're learning. We're all learning yeah. together. That's the whole point of this. Right. 
So uh, next Sunday, for example, where would I go to find the link, or how would I get the link to, to join well, the Hangout? Well, that's going to be, okay, it, if, on a future Sunday, I think uh, Kurt, if he, uh, assuming he agrees to do, uh, and we're talking about his agreement in email, so it's, it's looking very positive, but um, he'll be doing it probably in his own Illuminate, possibly, so we'll put the link there. But if we're doing a Hangout, then mm -hmm. uh, somebody... Well, we have to start one, and then we have the link, and then I can put it at Learning Together. I can tweet it, uh, and if you're in my Google, uh, if you're in my Google circles, I'd have to make sure you're in my Google circles because I shared this with my I think so. contacts. I never so figured out what to do with those Google circles other than to keep adding to them. Well, you go you go to Google, you go into Gmail or Google, and you click on the the Nina Plus, uh, for me it's Vance Plus, of course, and mm -hmm. then that will open up your <coughs> Facebook-like page, and in there you'll see, if you're in if you're in my circle, you'll see that uh, you have an invitation to the Hangout. So that's, or you can, another way, you can search on me. You go to Google Plus and search on me, and it'll pull up my profile, and you'll see where I'm hanging out. That's the way I always find Jeff. Okay, I'm trying that. <laughs> Sorry. A recorded phone. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Um, anyway, excuse me one second. <laughs> yeah. It's it's probably getting about time that uh, Robert needs to meet his other appointments, and um, he seems to have disappeared anyway. Um, so there he is. <laughs> oh, I I really like these the these conversational sessions. I. I like them so much better than the um, than the the ones where you're being talked to, the ones that I can just as easily pick up in the recording on my car. You know, it's just so much fun to just sit and talk to people. And, and Jeff's sessions are always like that. I always hang out with Jeff if if I get the chance, and sometimes he gets uh, uh, some pretty nice people to talk to. So um, anyhow, well, I don't know. What, what do you think, oh, uh, Robert? I think we should. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks for um, uh, helping set this up, and uh, I'm glad that we could get everyone um, together and, and have a chat. This has been this has been wonderful. I hope um, I hope to have um, you visit that site um, eacinstructuraldesigning.org and um, and sign up. Uh, it, it's kind of a, a work in process, but um, I'll I'll get you into the course, and we'll see what this all brings. But, um, Thank you. Nice you, you to probably, see you, Robert. Yeah, you probably have your tools uh, at the university, but uh, the, the big limitation of Hangout is it only allows 10 people in at a time. So if you're running a MOOC, you know, then it's not really going to work too well for you unless yeah. you just take the first 10 people and have a nice integument group. You know, that, that makes it intimate. Uh, but um, you're, you're welcome to use uh, the Illuminate from the web heads, that's always available, and uh, of course you probably have your own. And if you if you schedule any of your sessions at about this time on a Sunday, well, we'll just kind of come aboard, you know, and we could announce it as a learning together session if you want. Yeah, so there's it, options it, for you. It's an interesting um, kind of balance. We obviously want this to be as open as possible, and then uh, we. We at the university have certain requirements in terms of uh, what we can and can't do uh, uh, in terms of um, requirements. Uh, so, and, and use of social media. We have policies on, on social media use. So I'm kind of exploring these different um, options as well as, as what we can do. But um, I'll definitely make all of the sessions that we, we do public in some way or another. Okay, well, I, I just got a note on Google Hangout that said, are you still there? I'm, I, <laughs> maybe I hadn't made any, maybe it's noticed my video is frozen, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, it could be a little bit of a hint. It's also kind of dinner time here, and I'm getting hungry, and uh, <laughs> we've kept uh, all these good people glued to their screens for all this time, and so maybe thanks, we should... Thanks again. Yeah. Thank you all. Great to see okay. you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay. Have a good okay. Sunday, whatever's left to you. Yep. Bye-bye. <laughs>